Hello guys, welcome to my channel. So today we will be studying about the globular protein. Right, so the topic in the protein structure is for today is globular protein. Right, so last time we studied about the fibrous protein and different kinds of fibrous protein we saw. So now we'll study about the globular protein structure. So in globular protein, so different segments of the polypeptide chain or multiple polypeptide chain fold back on each other generating a more complex shape than that is seen we in the fibrous protein right so in the fibrous protein we just saw like there is an alpha helix or an alpha chains and it divides or it two or three alpha chains or alpha helixes come together and make fibrous protein but in this globular protein like there are different segments of polypeptide chain or multiple polypeptide chain that fold back on each other generating this more complex structure that is the globular protein. <clears throat> so the globular protein examples are like enzymes, transport proteins, motor proteins, uh, regulatory proteins, immunoglobulins proteins with many other functions, right? So uh, different kinds of what are the different kinds of globular proteins? So that are enzymes, right? Motor proteins regulatory proteins right transport proteins transport proteins right and and many other proteins with many other functions so all these proteins are different kinds of functions so what happened that to understand this globular protein like in 1950 in 1950 John Candry and his colleague so the John Candry and his colleagues what they did they carried out an experiment of an x-ray diffraction studies of myoglobulin so did this study on x-ray diffraction on which on myoglobin all right so there is studies on myoglobin so and in this during this the so the first breakthrough was uh, for the understanding of the three dimensional structure of this globular protein was by this extra diffraction that on myoglobulin that was carried out by John Candry and his colleague in 1950, right? So the myoglobin, if you know, is a relatively small oxygen binding protein of muscle cell. So this is a protein of muscle cells, right? And it is a small and it's it's oxygen oxygen binding protein. And so I will write it down so you will remember. So this is also small. It's not a big protein. So it's a small and oxygen binding protein of muscle cells. So the function of myoglobin is to store oxygen and to facilitate oxygen diffusion rapidly contracting the muscle tissue. So what's the function of myoglobin? So it, it stores the oxygen, right? And it also facilitate oxygen diffusion in rapidly contracting muscle tissue. So when the muscles are contracting, it facilitates oxygen diffusions. All right, so, right, so myoglobin. So what the myoglobin contain now what they found in the myoglobin all right so myoglobin contain a single polypeptide chain okay so it contains a single polypeptide chain of how many amino acids is contain of one 53 amino acid sequence of known sequence and this is 153 amino acids of the known sequence and with that it also contain plus it contain a single ion it contain single ion that is protoporphyrin porphyrin and that is also known as heme, H-E-M-E, all right? 
So the myoglobin contains a single polypeptide chain of 153 amino acid sequence and this 153 amino acid sequence is known and with that it contains a single ion protoporphyrin or heme group. So that group it has in this myoglobin. So this so the same heme group that is found in myoglobin is also found in hemoglobin as well. So this one is found in hemoglobin as well. Right? So this is what's the hemoglobin? So that is an oxygen binding protein of erythrocytes. Right? What is the hemoglobin? So that's an oxygen binding protein of erythrocyte and is responsible for the deep red brown color of both. So because of this heme group, the color of hemoglobin and the myoglobin is deep red brown. Right? So that brown color. Right? That's because of this. Right? So why hemoglobin and myoglobin are in deep red color? Because of this heme group. And this myoglobin is particularly abundant in the muscles of like diving mammals that is like whales, seals or porpoises because that's the abundant that the so abundant that the myoglobin has the muscles of these animals are brown. That's the reason why the muscles of these animals of whale or like seals or porpoises are brown because of this abundant muscle protein that is myoglobin. And what the function is? So the storage and distribution of function of the myo ox storage and distribution of oxygen by muscle myoglobin permits the diving mammals to remain submerged for long period. That's the reason they can remain submerged for longer period because of this myoglobin. Right. So on your screen you will see a tertiary or the three-dimensional picture of this myoglobin structure. So like in the middle the red that you are seeing so that's a red group surrounded by the protein is him the red one is this him group right and the backbone of the myoglobin molecule so the backbone of this myoglobin molecule you see that consists of eight relatively straight segments of alpha -alic. what it contains eight straight segments of alpha helix so it contains eight relatively straight segments of alpha alpha helix that is that is interrupted by banks right so there are it there are eight relatively straight alpha helix and it is interrupted by banks there are some banks that banks of which some of our beta turns and the longest alpha helix so in this eight the longest alpha helix has 23 amino acid amino acid while the short has just short has just seven amino acid Right, and all these alpha helices are right handed structure. And more than 70% of these residues in the myoglobin are in this alpha helical regions. Right, and the x ray analysis that has been done has revealed the precise position of each of the R groups. So, all of the this amino acids R group that what it does it fills up nearly all the space within the folded chain that is not occupied by the backbone so the backbone is surrounded and the all our groups are inside the space so that this x-ray diffraction shows right so many important conclusion were drawn from the structure of this myoglobin so what are those so first the positioning of this amino acid side chain reflects a structure that is largely stabilized by the hydrophobic effect. All right. So what happened? The positioning, the posi positioning of this amino acid side chain reflect a structure that is largely stabilized. That is stabilized by 
so the hydrophobic effect stabilizes the structure and most of the hydrophobic r group are in the interior of the amino interior of the molecule right so the hydrophobic r group are in the interior of the molecule hidden from the exposure to the water all but there are two polar groups are located on the outer surface only two polar r group two polar r group are located on the outer surface of the molecule and now all are hydrated so the myoglobin is so compact that it its interior has room for only four more for only four molecules of water so the myoglobin is so compact that it has only room for four molecules of water in the interior side so this dense hydrophobic core is a typical of globular protein right so that's a typical of globular protein whenever you find see the globular protein that's the typical that it has a hydrophobic core inside the globular protein so for this packed environment weak interaction and force and strengthen each other so what is the weak interaction that is strengthening this structure it's the non polar side chains that's the non polar side chains that makes van der waal interaction van der waal interaction that that significant contribution to stabilizing the hydrophobic interactions right so this is what it stabilizes the structure right and this this heme group the flat heme group rest in the crevice or the pocket in the myoglobin molecule so it's in the center of like it's a pocket and there in this heme group line so the iron atom in the center of heme group has two bonding position perpendicular to the plane of the heme right so we'll draw a structure and i will explain to you maybe something like that right so this in center there is a v That's it. Atom. Right, so there it's bound to this R group. Right, it's something like that, and it is joined by. Right, so the iron atom in the center of this heme group. So this is the heme group. So that's a heme group. Just a geometrical structure for this heme group. Why I draw the geometrical structure? Uh, you can see on your screen the actual structure formula, but I just draw this geometrical feature to just explain this. So there is an iron atom in the center of this heme group. That is the Fe. Two plus and has so this has two bonding coordination position, two bonding or the two coordinating position perpendicular to the plane of the heme. So, uh, for example, this is the heme group. So, the two perpendicular there is two bonding position. So, one of this position is bond to the R group of this histidine residue. So, this is what this is. This is H S. That's a histidine residue at the position ninety three. and on the other side at which so the other side is the which the o2 molecule can bind so within this pocket so the pocket of the myoglobin the accessibility of this heme group to the solvent is highly restricted as it is real inside so this is an important for function why because free heme groups in any oxygenated sol uh, solution are rapidly oxidized from ferrous so if it's in this state this free heme group so it has this iron atom right ferrous 
So what it happens when it's in an oxygenated solution? So this can be rapidly oxidized to ferric form, which is an active in the reversible binding of the O2 to the ferric form, which does not bind. So when it's in this state, it will bind O2, but when it's in this ferric form, it will not bind O2 or oxygen. So that's a important function for this heme group. So that's why it's really inside. So this was all being studied by John Candrew and his colleagues. And this is this was shown by actually this diffraction technique. And today there are like new techniques as well. So the one of that popular is and um, ah, that's nuclear magnetic. Magnetic resonance. Spectroscopy. So that's a spectroscopy. Don't confuse with the uh, MRI. All right, yeah. So this is the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. That's one of the technique for providing more information on a protein structure. So after studying the thousands of globular proteins, so what the biochemists know that it is clear that myoglobin illustrate just one of the many ways in which a polypeptide chain can be folded. So it's not only this way in the globular protein that the polypeptide chain folds. There are so many ways. So you can see on your screen a table that shows the proportion of alpha helix and the beta conformation in several small single chain, poly, uh, single chain globular protein. So each of this protein has a single distinct structure adapted for its uh, particular biological functions but together they share several important properties with the myoglobin so what it is it each is folded compactly and in each case the hydrophobic amino acid side chains are oriented towards the interior that is away from the water and the hydrophilic chains are on the outer surface of the water right so they are this are interior and the hydrophilic are on the outer surface the structures are also stabilized by multitudes of hydrogen bonds and some ionic interaction right so the structures are Stabilized by the hydrogen bonds and some ionic interaction. All right. So now to understand the complete three-dimensional structure, we need to analyze its folding patterns. Correct. So we, we what we will do, we will begin by defining two important terms that describe the protein structural patterns or elements in the polypeptide chain, and then we will turn to the folding rules. So the first term. So the first term is. So the first term is motif. So what is motif? It's also called, also known as fold. Also known as fold or more rarely known as super secondary structure. So what is motif? A motif or fold is a recognizable folding pattern. What is motif or a fold? It is a Recognizable folding pattern. Folding pattern. So it is a recognizable folding pattern involving two or more two or more elements of Elements of secondary structure. Two or more elements of secondary structure and connections between them. So, what is motif or fold? Is a recognizable folding pad folding pattern that involves two or more elements of secondary structure and the connection between them what what does it mean by secondary structure so means alpha helix uh, beta turn or beta conformations so if it's involved like something like uh, beta alpha beta so that that will be a motif so motif can be a very simple 
such as two elements of secondary structure folded against each other and represent only a small part of a protein. So the example is beta alpha beta loop. So the simple example is a beta alpha beta loop and uh, motif can also be very elaborate structure as well not only just uh, simple involving scores of protein segments folded together such as beta barrel right so when we studied about uh, a transport protein there was beta barrel as well remember and you can see the picture of beta barrel on your screen so it can be also beta barrel so in some cases a single large motif can compromise the entire protein right so the term motif and fold are often used interchangeably although the fold is applied more commonly uh, to somewhat more complex folding patterns right? so the fold term is applied to like more complex pattern rather than this term motif so the segment defined as a motif or fold may or may not be independently stable. So we studied about the coiled coil of alpha carotene. That's a well studied motif and which is also found in some other proteins as well. So the distinctive arrangement of eight, this distinctive arrangement of the eight segments of the alpha helices in this myoglobin is replicated in all globins and is called the globin fold. Right, so this eight eight straight segments of alpha helix in the myoglobin is replicated in all globin, so it's also called that why it's called the globin fold because of this eight alpha helices. Right, right. So that was the motive that we studied, and the second one is domain. So what is domain that describes the structural pattern that is domain. So domain that is defined by who did this that's by J. Richardson in 1981 right this is a part what it is domain is a part of a polypeptide chain that is independently what is domain it's a part of polypeptide chain that is independently independently stable or could undergo uh, undergo moments right as a single entity All right, so that is a domain that's a part of a polypeptide chain. So what does that mean? So polypeptide with more than few hundreds amino acid residues often fold in two or more domains. So when there is like a complex protein and it has like two or three hundreds of amino acids, so it, it can fold in a different or more than two or more domains. So sometimes with different functions. Right, so just a single protein, but it has a different function. So in many cases, a domain from large protein, so a domain from large protein will retain its three-dimensional structure even when separated. So for example, proteolytic cleavage or the proteolytic splitting of the enzyme from the remainder of the polypeptide chain. So what does it mean? So in many cases, a domain from a large protein will retain its native three-dimensional structure even if it's separated. Right from the large protein, one domain is separated, for example, but it still remains the three dimensional structure from the remainder of the polypeptide chain. So, in a protein with multiple domain, each domain may appear as a distinct globular globe. So, what's the important point? Right, so what's the important point? So, in protein with multiple domains right each domain so what will happen each domain may appear as a may appear as a single or a distinct globular lobe 
right so on your screen you will see the structure of this uh, that's an example of structural domain in the polypeptide of troponin c so you can see the cal calcium binding protein associated with this muscles has two separate calcium binding domains right so that is domain and different domains may have different distinct function as well such as binding of small molecules or interaction with other proteins so small protein usually have just only one domain 